the Super Bowl is still, you know, a, a big venue for TV ads, of course, with a large live audience. But auto brands seem like they've been in decline. Is there a, a segment that's like pricing out the automakers the way cryptocurrencies did last year? So we had four auto brands in this year's game, Kia, um, Toyota, BMW, and Volkswagen, mm -hmm. which actually equals the same number of auto brands in last year's game. Uh, mm -hmm. But it's down from the 2022 game when we had six automakers. And if you remember, that was sort of the beginning of the EV hype uh, 2022 when we had all a lot of automakers out there sort of foreshadowing their great EV investments. And of course, we know that that segment has sort of cooled off a little, the hype's died down a little bit. So I think that has affected things a little bit. And also the, the Detroit Three, none of them spent on the game this year. Stellantis, which is a, a regular Super Bowl advertiser, has been in cost cutting mode, of course. And, you know, they pulled back on a lot of things. And the Super Bowl is one of the bigger ticket items that you can save a lot of money on not doing anything. So they were absent. And of course, if you go back in history, they've been behind some of the more iconic ads in the game. So so they were they were on the sidelines this year. Well, and I mean, for brands, I mean, there have been years where Stellant or Stellantis predecessors, you know, Fiat Chrysler would have three ads by themselves. Exactly. And, you know, one thing I was watching as the Detroit Lions were um, making some noise and maybe had a path to the Super Bowl. I was wondering if the Lions had made it, if one of the Detroit brands would find a way in because they would be noticeably absent. You know, the, here, yeah. here the Lions maybe finally made the Super Bowl and there's no Detroit <laughs> automaker in the game. In this uh, but they didn't have to worry about yeah. that inevitably. Right. <laughs> Yeah, it would be it would be very interesting. Probably more of a uh, a culture ad than a product ad at that point. But right, and they did some things of both GM and Stellantis around the Lions as they were making their playoff run. Um, you know, sort of leaning into that, but they didn't have. Unfortunately for Detroit fans, they didn't have the opportunity to continue that. Right, right. So of the four that. Uh, aired last night. Was there one that particularly stood out to you? So I personally like the Volkswagen ad. You know, Volkswagen had not been in the game for 10 years and they came back with a sweeping ad sort of tracing their 75 years of history in the U.S. and, and really sort of trying to remind American viewers the place that VW has and the consciousness of many people, which goes back, of course, to the to the Beatle coming into America 75 years ago. They sort of leaned into that being sort of this odd car that sort of came in on shore. And then they sort of went through the, the years of, you know, the, the hippie vans. And they, they even had a flashback to their Super Bowl ad from 10 years ago when they had the Darth Vader scene with the Passat, which is one of the classic ads. So they had a nice little nod in there. And they actually used the same director that did that um, Darth Vader ad, uh, Lance Accord. So they, they were able to use him again. Um, however, the general public actually liked Kia the best. The USA Today ad meter, which is sort of the go-to score that most people look at, ranked Kia as the third best ad. Um, but automakers did overall, I think, pretty well this year, actually. If you look at the, the general perception and the rankings, um, BMW scored high with their ad that had Christopher Walken in it. Toyota was probably, I think it came in number 38 in, in, in the ad meter. We could talk about that as well. I thought, I mean, I thought it was pretty funny. It was maybe just a little more like a regular run of the mill ad. And it actually was, uh, you know, they, <laughs> they admit that. I mean, they didn't call it run of the mill, but they got an opportunity. They had come out, uh, you know, like less than two weeks before the game or so and said, you know, we're not going to be in this year's, game which was sort of puzzling because they had spent all that money to be the nfl sponsor um but then they got a last cbs called them last minute and said listen we had this inventory open up would you guys like to be in the game and they said they decided within 24 hours yes they felt they had an ad in their pocket that was worthy which is of course the tacoma ad that ran which is was all about uh, people grabbing onto the side door handle in an attempt to sort of show the thrilling nature of riding in a tacoma off off-road um so they ended up jumping in last minute you know it, it wasn't the kind of over-the-top production or a, a big celebrity uh kind of uh, of an ad but the tacoma 
is a real celebrity of itself for Toyota dealers. It's such a, it's a high volume product and it's of course their best selling truck. So it's a, it's pretty important for them. And this, this ad actually begins a big campaign on the Tacoma they, they originally had planned to run the, the ad that ran in the Super Bowl a week before. So they held it, ran it in the Super Bowl. They also ran an ad on Univision's broadcast of the Super Bowl. It's a different ad hmm. and they have all kinds of ads coming for the Tacoma, all specifically targeted for, for different demographics as well. So they're, they're really spending a lot on it, it seems. That's funny. You mentioned the Univision ad. There's the, the one Spanish line at the end of uh, the Tacoma ad that ran on CBS. Did they use English and Spanish on Univision or is it all Spanish? I, I didn't have an opportunity to watch the Univision ad. I presume it was all Spanish, but I actually did ask Toyota's marketing executive about that decision. And, you know, they, they said that the Tacoma actually over indexes with the Hispanic population and they're trying to, to grow that even more. So I think it was definitely an intentional choice to have the Spanish language in the general market ad as well. It, it actually made the line funnier too. Yes. I thought. <laughs> so the BMW ad, uh, talking like walking, uh, how did that play with people? I think pretty well. We 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 kind of had an internal discussion about that at Ad Age. Uh, one of my colleagues was wondering: Is, is Gen Z, are the younger buyers, going to understand that? Are they going to even know who Christopher Walken is? Right. And I said, Well, actually, I don't know if you're Gen Z if you can afford a BMW at this point. So I don't think they really <laughs> care. You know, you can, they're probably going after more of the millennial, the Gen X, even some of the boomers that have that disposable income to spend on a BMW. So I think it probably worked nicely for that audience. And they did have a little Usher cameo at the end that, that may have appealed to sort of a different demographic as well. Um, but I guess it's one of those where I think people remember the ad, but they don't necessarily always connect it back to the brand. It kind of That's a that good point. That's always the risk. BMW ads. Yeah. That's always the risk of, of, you know, they did, if you watch it, there was the opening scene where Walken sort of throws out a line about um, plugging the electronic vehicle. He's, you know, and, you know, the, the premise of the ad was was obviously to say this is a one of a kind vehicle, just like Walken is a one of a kind right. uh, personality. Interesting. It's always a, a challenge on on those fronts. But um, so why do we why do you think that the Kia ad resonated? I, I kind of felt it was a little hard to follow, although obviously very, you know, sign of a sentimental thing. Yeah, I mean, you know, this this Super Bowl overall was just full of humor, celebrity ads. So I think that anything emotional kind of stood out just because it was different. Mm -hmm. um, and it was a it was a you know, there was some nice music in the Kia spot. You know, I think just opening up to see a, a young girl figure skating is going to automatically endear itself <laughs> to the viewing public. But your question about how many people tie the ads to the vehicle might be applicable for this ad. You know, they're obviously trying to, to promote the fact that the EV9 can be used as like a mobile power source. So that was the whole premise of the ad. And they did try to like, if you watch it, you know, the scenes they intentionally showed him, um, you know, plugging the car into, you know, power the speakers and the lights. But I, I'm just wondering how many people caught that. Yeah, it was it was a hard read for me. But, um, you know, ads are not meant to be seen only once. <laughs> right. <laughs> So I was curious, you know, this is a rare Super Bowl that went to overtime. Does that affect the advertising uh, side at all? So what, what the networks, you know, this was only the second overtime game. The last one was in 2017. And that this game, of course, CBS had it this year. Back in 2017, Fox had that game. Hmm. What they do is they'll actually sell uh, spots for overtime if the game goes to overtime. And then, you know, if, you, if it doesn't go to overtime, the advertisers get their money back. Uh, you know, no automakers seem to buy those spots, or at least the game didn't go on long enough. Maybe some automakers had some long-term ads if it had gone yeah. even further. We did see a State Farm ad in that slot. They just reran the, the Arnold Schwarzenegger ad. Other than that, you know, it was actually two auto insurers. Progressive also got one of those spots and Discover a uh, credit card as well. Any uh, final uh, big takeaways for the auto industry from this year's game and the, and the ads? 
you know, I, one thing it's 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 not too soon to talk about next year. I, you know, these decisions are often made in budget meetings that occur over the next few months. So I'll be super interested to see if we we're going to get to a point where we see more automakers decide to come back to the game, or if this is just one of these categories now that just is not going to be as dominant as it once was. EJ Schultz is news editor for Ad Age, where he keeps an eye on the automotive industry, among others. EJ, thanks so much for joining me today. Thanks for having me.